Okay, as an author, one of the things we need to consider is how exactly we're going to go about self-publishing our book. The problem is there are a lot of scams out there that you're gonna to want to avoid because if you choose one of these, it can cost you a lot of money. This is Chris Baird from selfpublishingmadeeasynow.com where self-publishing doesn't have to be so hard. So in today's video, we are going to discuss self-publishing companies to avoid and ways to spot them. So let's get straight into it. The first thing is why authors need to be cautious about scam publishers. And the thing is, is there's a lot of money that's on the table and the frustration involved with choosing one of these scam publishers can be so massive that it will discourage you from continuing to write. Your goal is to get these books onto the market and selling, which is what most authors have in mind when they first are putting a book onto the market. And the challenge is, is there's a lot of companies out there that are specifically designed to extract money from you and not really helping you so much on getting your book on the market and selling. Or if it does, if they do get it on the market, it's gonna be a lower quality of book and they're continually milking money out of you with every single turn that you do. <clears throat> and in the end of it, you end up perhaps even losing control of your book itself and it will negatively impact in terms of your contracts, your readership, and even future books that you're gonna put on the market. And these, this is one of the big reasons you need to really pay close attention to what you're doing and who you're working with when it comes to self-publishing your book. So self-publishing companies to avoid. So publishers with unnecessary costs and fees. This is probably one of the biggest ones and the most painful ones. And if you aren't aware of how much you should or could be paying for specific services, they are completely engineered to charge you as much as humanly possible for every little service and even things that aren't even services to you as you go through the process. And this can involve charging for formatting and editing and cover design and and some of these things where they're charging 10 20 times as much as it would cost you just to do it yourself or to find a freelancer who could do the exact same services and like when it comes to formatting i teach in my formatting made easy course which you find below in the description exactly how to go through those steps where you do it yourself you don't just keep on paying and paying and paying you simply have the, you buy the tool one time and you simply learn the steps on how to do it. And then from that point on, you're not paying for these additional services. And this is by far the most affordable, flexible way of going about doing with that. But they are gonna charge you for all of these things. In addition, they may even charge you for the contracts they're gonna be doing. And another one of the fees that they love to hit you for is charging you to make a purchase of a certain number of your own books. So they're going to have these books, but then of course it's going to go through their thing and they're going to be making a, a, a percentage of that money as well. So the royalties that come back on the books that they're producing, they're going to hit you there. They're going to hit you for charging for those. They're going to charge you for the covers, charge you for the editing, charge you for the marketing. <clears throat> every single phase, every single step is going to have multiple fees that they're going to hit you for. And you're going to want to look out for these you want to see transparent pricing structures is what you want to see. You don't want to be surprised later on to say, oh no, it costs this and then it costs this and then it costs this. All of these things, all of these additional fees that you're, they're charging you for your book and you're like, what exactly is going on here? The other thing is vanity presses pretending to be traditional publishers. This one is incredibly common. It's where they pretend they make it look like they're a traditional publisher. And a couple of ways they're going to do this is by saying, oh, look, you know, we, we are very strict on our selection. So send us your manuscript. And then they check your manuscript and they go, okay, we, we chose you. You won. You, your, yours is so good that we definitely want to do it. You see, so you feel like you're all special and exclusive when in reality, it's not at all that thing. And they're pretending that they're actually making, you know, oh, they're, they're choosing you, you got chosen, but in reality, uh, they did not. Another way you can spot these, these ones that are pretending is that you have to pay a fee in order to, there's no advance, you're not getting paid, you're paying them to do this. And then in addition, they're, they're, they're taking all of the royalties that you're making and they get to decide how much you're, you're making after that. So they do a lot of these things that make them appear as if they are a traditional publisher when in reality, they're just a vanity or hybrid publisher. And it can trick a lot of authors where you feel like, oh, I've, ex you know, I'm finally made it. You know, somebody's chosen me. And then they're like, you just have to pay this money. And you're like, wait a second. I thought I should be get paid in advance. Another trick is they can pay you a very small advance and then demand money. 
Do you see? So you get this feeling like they get this advance, but usually they won't even pay that advance until they've already got money from you to cover the cost. Like, well, of course we're gonna need to cover the cost for this, this, and this. Then they return a little bit of that money and call it the advance in order to get you to feel like you actually are getting paid to do the book. And then they're keeping a massive amount of the royalties that are coming on the book. This is really sneaky, sneaky strategies that are used uh, when you do this. And that's one of the reasons why you're gonna to wanna to check their reputation with other authors. And I've mentioned this a thousand times which is for any of these companies you're going to want to find an author who's published at least twice with this company and has been happy with the results and the reason why i say it is because many of the authors who go with these companies are very happy as they're going through the process but once you've completed the process and you look back and say well how are the sales looking for this book how exactly did did they deliver on the promises that they had and then you'd say this was a terrible deal and then your book is stuck behind the bars of that particular company you maybe even lose the rights to what you were doing next issue is marked up prices for low quality editing and designing this is another thing they will do they were going to charge you higher prices for each and every one of these services they're offering where well, they're way high prices some of the services you can almost do them for free and they don't even give you uh, they don't even give you results on this these exorbitant fees charged for just nonsense that really you don't even need some of these services but they they'll go you can do this you can do this you see and they may have like a package deal and they'll go oh but you should go for the pro option the the, the, they'll give you like tiers, right? Where they'll then upsell you on those tiers when in reality, they aren't in the end going to actually deliver any of the results that they're promising. And their standards may not even be industry, meaning the industry standards of quality and design for the books that they're doing. The next trick is writing contests and awards no one has heard of. That's right. Lots of writing contests that these companies will have. And hey, we need to enroll your company in these contests so that you can win and show that your company is actually a high quality company, right? Uh, it, it, your, your, your book is a high quality book, right? And these writing contests, of course, you've never heard of it. And what are they, what are these? But how does this little trick work? The answer is you have to pay in order to even compete. So they're bringing in tons of money from all of these different authors who are like trying to compete. And even if somebody wins, the fact is like a lottery, they'll just pay out a small percentage. So they don't even care who wins or loses. You would want to know who exactly are the judges for these contests. Have they even been recognized? Is there anybody else who vouches for these contests? Or is it just at the end of the day, all these authors compete in these contests, their judges randomly pick a winner. The winner gets paid a small percentage of the total money that came in, and the person who ran the contest just walks away with a lot of money. What they're really doing is just figuring out ways in which they can maximize the money that, that you, the way that they're making money. They're making money on literally every single twist and turn of the entire thing. Does that make sense? The next thing is the publishers with deceptive claims and advertising, where they're going to be telling you, oh, you're going to be an Amazon bestseller, and I should comment. They can, in fact, deliver on that one. That doesn't require too much effort to be an Amazon bestseller because all they really have to do is choose your put your book into a minor category uh, that has at least 100 books in there. Then what they do is they make sure you get about 30, 50, 100 purchases, which they're using the money they've already milked out of you earlier in the process in order to ensure those sales are made. And then that will bump your book up. It'll get you the bestseller flag on Amazon. And then look, they delivered on the promise. But it's completely meaningless because it isn't going to really transfer into actual sales. You're in some minor or a category that isn't even relevant for your book, meaning Amazon could actually target your book for your, your account for termination if they found that you were using this deceptive practice of choosing a minor category that isn't even related to the topic of your book in order to get that bestseller flag. This is a common practice. So you really need to be wary of this of them doing this. In addition, they're using high pressure tactics saying you really need to do this. If you want your book to sell, you absolutely have to do this to get it to be a bestseller. And they don't have a proven track record. Record. They don't seem to have other authors who can vouch for what they've done. They're simply making a lot of high claims. And at the end, the reason why authors don't go back to them is because they're not able to reproduce these results. The next uh, issue is ISBN charges. They can charge a lot. Now, keep in mind, 
for ISBN uh, uh, for the charges. On if you're in the United States, the Bokker will charge you $125 for uh, for a single ISBN. If you buy multiple ISBNs, you can decrease the overall cost. I also would recommend going on Fiverr and finding companies that will actually publish your your book, assigning their ISBNs to it. I myself also do services like this. You can contact me in the description below, um, where at a lower rate we can assign an ISBN to our publishing comp houses, and then you can decide which one matches best for you. So, uh, and that is services that I do that, that is completely legitimate and within the terms and, and services, but it also doesn't involve using like some of the free ISBNs that you would find on Amazon, which can be targeted by smaller uh, smaller publishing houses that don't want to use Amazon's books inside of their, they don't want to publish books that were done by Amazon. And so that is a way of getting around that, but at the same time staying within the terms. So in other words, you can have ISBNs for smaller publishing houses uh, used for yours. And I would suggest going on Fiverr and looking for that. You cannot, however, buy ISBNs. It is illegal to sell ISBNs. It is in violation of the terms of the contracts. But assigning ISBNs and putting books underneath these ISBN, these publishing houses using their ISBNs completely legitimate, but you're going to watch out. If these companies are saying, we want to charge you $500 for an ISBN. They're taking advantage of the fact that you're not watching videos like this video that's telling you exactly how to avoid that specific scam. It's not really a scam in a sense because you're the one who's paying overly high prices. So it's not a scam. They're not cheating or lying to you. They're just overcharging you for services that you don't even really need. Because if their book is only going on Amazon anyways, you can just take one of the free ISBNs and go that route if you so wish to. Next is copyright hijacking. And that would be to say they literally can, if they publish this book under their publishing house, they can, and they're claiming it under themselves, they can take control over your, your copyright for your book. Even if they do give you the copyright for your book uh, and they say, oh, you still maintain rights of the book, that's fine. But if it's published underneath their, their, them on, their, on the platforms, then the challenge is how exactly you get control back of that book. You could take the book and republish it, but now we have duplicate content and Amazon will target your account. It can literally terminate your account on the basis of duplicate content. You have to be care very careful about this and see how restrictive these contracts that they're doing. I've worked with many clients who have gone one of these routes and then their book is stuck behind the prison of these companies. And then of course, in order to get it outside of the prison, they want to charge you additional fees, hundreds of dollars in order to return it back to you. Now notice we didn't say return the rights, but just for them to take the book out, which takes them a quarter of a second to unpublish that book from Amazon, then you're going to lose all of the reviews that you had on that book as a result of you taking it down and republishing it yourself. So it's almost as if you're restarting from scratch on a book and they were really just making all of this in addition to this whole copyright side when they have it published on their plat on, on behind their publishing name. Then what happens is they get all the reports. They decide how much they want to send of the royalties. And in reality, they may even charge you a fee just to send you a report on your own sales. It's unbelievable how you can get screwed in so many different ways with this whole particular strategy they're using. The other is pressure to order books. And this is used by actually most of these companies where after you've finally gone through the thing, then they'll say, oh, you really should order books. Give them to your friends, give them to your family. Also ordering books will increase your total sales. So you really need to get in there and start to buy these books and they'll keep putting pressure on you. So if you say, why is my book not selling at all? They say, it's because you need to order more books. And of course, since they're making money off of every single order you place, it just continues an unending stream of revenue that's coming into them while you're just bleeding money and you really do not have the ability ability uh, to to recoup this money and that's that's another issue that you have even some governments I would just comment is that if you get their free ISBNs they will then say you have to send us lots and lots of copies of your books so be very careful uh, they will bleed you in that way and the goal is to make money not to lose money and there's so many mistakes that you can make here if you aren't going and that's one of the reasons with my one-on-one -on -one program which you can find below in the in the description we I show you I show you exactly how to navigate through all of these common mistakes to make sure that you're not one of these people becoming the sucker of these companies where they're just simply taking out you're losing money to them and that's that's the reason as I as I tell all of my one-on-one -on -one clients there are 1,000 different strategies when it comes to self-publishing and my goal is to help you avoid making those mistakes and so and that's exactly where it goes and I do not take any percentage of any revenues. I simply show you how to set up your own accounts so that you don't have any of these things. You're not dependent upon me at any level for anything. 
And somebody was recently asking that question. That's one of the reasons with the one on one program. I do not set it under any of my own things. I own no rights. I know nothing. I simply show you how to do the steps yourself. Okay. The next one is again back to paid contest and paid reviews. This can get you in trouble with these paid reviews, particularly you can get your account targeted if they're doing the reviews in a way that violates Amazon's terms and services for the account and the contest. You also have to look out that these contests are legitimate contests and not just another way for them to milk money out of you, which is so commonly done. The other is a focus on selling to you and not to your readers. In other words, these companies don't care about your readers. They just care about selling you on buying more services that you really don't need. They don't even really care about your readers. They're selling you market, marketing plans and selling you upgrades on every service, an upgrade on the cover, an upgrade on the formatting, an upgrade on the marketing, an upgrade on all of these different things. They just want to do it. And they really have no proven track record and do not believe their sales pages. They're complete nonsense. You need to find four forums we find other authors talking upon about whether or not it worked for them or did not work for them when going with them. The next thing is publishers with unethical contracts and you're keeping an eye out for these ones. Again, when they have the contracts, there are all sorts of little things where things are very vague or using confusing terms. How clear is it? And usually the easiest way to know what's happening is just to talk with other authors and other publish others who have gone with them or like the uh, Alliance for Independent Authors where they actually will flag specific publishing companies and tell the ones that they actually trust when it comes to this and looking for clauses that restrict what your ability to do and retaining ownership even over your own books. So how to spot them? There's a couple things. The first one is you use resources with up-to-date publisher lists. And that would be like the, the Alliance of Independent Authors or Ally. It's a fantastic resource. I've been using them for several years and they're a great way and resource to go about uh, making sure that you do not get screwed when it comes to your books. They give lists of reliable authors that you should go with. And the other is it like these outdated publishing houses. Some of them, if they go out of business, your book is permanently stuck in limbo where it'll just stay on Amazon and you can't even get a hold of these people. They don't reply to you and they don't even sell the services anymore. So now your book is permanently stuck and that can be really difficult. So you're going to want to look for reliable lists and you and going for publishers. If you're going to go for one of these hybrid ones then making sure that they've been around for a while and not someone who's just going to disappear. The other is you're going to visit their publisher's website and browse their titles. Look at the titles and see how many of them are best sellers still or at least in the top hundred thousand because if you find that you're not able to find any of their titles that are still in existence connected to them and none of them seem to be selling in the top hundred thousand that is a huge red flag you're going to want to look out for and, and you're going to want to see what do the quality look like look at the look inside look at the description do you see that's what they can sell you on your author's bio selling you on that selling you on the description selling you on reviews selling you on the look and feel, the formatting, the cover, all of these things. There's so many areas for which they can milk money out of you and you need to be very cautious before going through them. The third one is explore author forums. Find other authors who have gone with these places and see if they are satisfied with what's happened. And that is such an important one. If you can't find author forums discussing them, that's a huge red flag. So tips for finding a reputable traditional publisher. The first thing is before you hire a literary agent, you should definitely make sure that you research which literary agent uh, could help you navigate this process. Somebody who others vouch for, kind of like we we're talking with these authors platforms and such author forums where you find literary agents through them where other people can vouch for them as somebody who's good. You're going to want to look at the background and experience of them before we even get started here. What exactly is, how long have they been around, how reputable are they? And then the compatibility is this is this somebody who's going to be able to work with you? Are you going to be able to go with them and go back and forth? Are they going to not lose touch? Are they going to not continue to try to upsell you? You're going to consider your genre and your competition. Make sure you choose within your genre things that are going to match you what you're doing well. So you're going to want to make sure that these, these companies you're working with, that you specialize in your specific genre, not just in general lists. And so that's another one. You're going to do in-depth research on them to make sure that they in fact aren't going to scam you. You're gonna read the reviews, but not the reviews on their own website, but other websites that are independent reviews and websites that aren't getting paid by them or an affiliate of them in order to see if they're trustworthy. You're gonna consider their reputation. Do they have a reputation at all? Or are they suing anybody who mentions it? You'll notice I didn't mention the names of these companies because they will sue me. So I will not do that. I will just tell you what the signs are so you can see the red flags for yourself. And as new ones pop up or they go down and they just create a new name, you're not gonna 
going to fall for their, their sneaky, sneaky tactics that they're using against you. Check your competition. Look at your competition and see what they're using. See if they're using any of these companies because that's also a way of seeing maybe if it's reliable, especially if the books are ranking in the top 100,000. And attending writing conferences can be a helpful way in order to find others who can tell you the truth about them who aren't worried about getting sued by these companies because they're making tons of money. Now, list of reputable traditional and self-publishers. So traditional publishers, the first one will be Chronicle Books. So this is a big one. It's an independent publisher based in San Francisco, California. They publish a wide range of books, including children's books, cookbooks, and lifestyle design books and gift products. And they're also well known for their high quality design and production values and their focus on creativity and innovation in publishing. So this is definitely a traditional publisher you can consider. And these are some of the, not the massive ones that you've heard their names, like the big six or whatever, but they're smaller ones, but they're definitely worth considering. And these are reputable publishes. Soho Publishing is the next one. And it's another independent publisher based in New York City. It was founded in 1986. And you'll notice it was founded a long time ago, which means this is somebody you can count, count on. They focus on publishing crime fiction, literary fiction, international literature. And the thing is they have a commitment to diverse voices and stories and for their high editorial standards, innovative marketing strategies, using lots and lots of interesting strategies. This is definitely one you should consider if it's in your genre and that sounds of interest, at least to look it up. MIT Press. Is the next one and it's a press it's affiliated with the massachusetts institute of technology and they're publishing journals in the fields of science technology and science and the humanities the thing is with them is they're known for rigorous academic standards so if your books are in this area then this may in fact be something you want to do it includes open access open access initiatives and digital publishing the next one is Atria Publishing. And this one here is, it's an imprint of Simon & Schuster, which is again, one of the big ones, a division of Viacom CBS. And they publish again, a wide range of fiction and nonfiction, including commercial fiction, memoirs, and lifestyle books. And they're known for their publishing, again, diverse and inclusive voices. So this is another one you may wish to consider. And it is also an imprint of one of the major publishing houses. Then we have John Wiley and Sons. And this is a publisher of academic books, journals, and online resources, similar to the MIT press that we talked about earlier. And they include science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and business. So if your books are in these areas, then definitely worth considering. And they have a lot of high quality and peer reviewed content there as well. Okay. Then you have Amazon. Uh, this is for the uh, self publishing side. You have Amazon uh, Kindle direct publishing and Amazon KDP, which is the one I've, I spend most of my time talking about. Definitely worth considering. You can do it for free and you don't really have to apply. You simply can set up an account and start publishing books. And then you have Apple Books for Authors. And this one is a, a great self-publishing platform that gives you the ability to reach the Apple audience, all the people using different app, Apple tech, which is definitely worth considering. Another is Kobo, and this is out of Canada. And they also will give you in their uh, allow authors and independent publishers to distribute their ebooks globally and offers a bunch of tools and resources to getting your book out. I know here in Norway, that's one of the ones you'll be able to see their, their uh, little readers. So, uh, so that's a fantastic one to consider. Then you have Barnes and Noble Press. And again, you can do the exact same thing for independent authors like yourself. Uh, and you're able to get your books distributed through theirs. And they have a good distribution, mostly in the United States. So that's, that's one you're going to consider. And then Readsy. It's an online online marketplace that connects authors with a whole range of publishing professionals to ensure that your book is published in a high quality format and gives all sorts of resources and tools. So it's definitely worth considering. It gives you a lot of ways of doing it if you don't want to use Fiverr and Upwork, especially in order to find uh, the resources that you're going to need, but it gives you a big network of these professionals. Now they do charge a bit more if you go over the Readsy route, but it makes it easy to find quality professionals that will be willing to help you do the entire process. Now in wrap up, you, you need to be careful to make sure that you're choosing the right publishing company and that you're not choosing ones that are going to scam you or have these very tricky complex contracts that are going to take control over your rights. You should consider things like what are your personal goals? What genre are you doing within? And what is the budget that you have? And these are some of the things that I also help with my group coaching clients and my, my one-on-one uh, program clients to navigate the complexities of these processes in order to choose 
the route that will work best for you, which you can always find below in the description as you're moving through there. And you should research and compare these different publishing options to figure out which ones are best for you. But my question for you today is, what lessons have you learned from self-publishing companies that you've tried? I'd like to know what mistakes you have made and what are the most important lessons you've learned. And check up above me here for more video answers to your self-publishing questions. Thanks.